In this tutorial, the main functions of Arrangement View will be examined. Arrangement View can be accessed by either pressing this button here or by using the Tab key on your keyboard. Arrangement View is designed for when you want to plan in advance what's going to happen during a song or a mix. Clips are positioned along the timeline, creating a fixed arrangement that will sound the same every time it's played. So, in comparison, Session View is best suited to performing live experimenting and improvising. Arrangement view is more suited to testing out mixes and sets, creating your own remixes and writing your own tracks. Arrangement view can be very helpful to a DJ. You can lay out each mix along the timeline, testing out at which point you want to bring in the next tune and how you want to do the mix. It's even possible to DJ wholly in arrangement view, although the majority of DJs do normally use session view when performing. In Arrangement View, everything is set out like a traditional sequencer program, such as Pro Tools, Cubase or Logic. Tracks are arranged vertically, and the time is displayed from left to right. The top of the screen displays time in bars and beats, and the bottom displays it in minutes and seconds. You can have audio tracks and MIDI tracks in the same way as with Session View. Remember though that when using audio files, they need to be put onto an audio track and MIDI files can only be used on a MIDI track. You can also have return tracks, and these will root effects from any number of tracks. The return tracks are opened and shut by clicking on the icon marked R. The bottom channel is marked Master, and this is where you can automate controls that will affect the whole project, such as Tempo and Crossfader. Audio files can be added into Arrangement View in a couple of ways. They can be dragged in from the browser in the same way as with Session View. Alternatively, if you want to use clips that you already have open in Session View, you can drag them onto the Arrangement View button and then place them wherever you want to. You need to remember though that once a clip is dragged into Arrangement View, it's treated separately from the clip that is left behind in Session View. This means that if, for example, I add warp markers to this clip, then the clip that it came from in Session View will not have changed. If you drag an audio file into an empty space when you import it, a new audio track will be created. Additional tracks can also be added by going to the Create menu and selecting Insert Audio Track or Insert MIDI Track, or by right-clicking below the current tracks and selecting Insert Audio or MIDI Track. The order of tracks can be rearranged by clicking on the track name and moving them to a different position. You can change how much of a track you can see by adjusting the bar at the bottom of the track, and you can minimise or maximise the track information by pressing the triangular button. To hear the arrangement, click on the play button. You will see the bar moving across the screen, and this indicates which part of the song is currently playing back. The arrangement position is also listed in bars and beats up here. Playback can be stopped at any time by clicking on the stop button. And if you want to return the arrangement position to the start, click on stop a second time. You can now see that the arrangement position is listed as being at the start of bar 1. There's another button up here that's worth pointing out, the follow button. You'll notice that if I zoom in a bit, and then play the arrangement. Once the play marker has gone off the screen, I can no longer see what's happening in the song. If you press the follow button, then when the play marker reaches the edge of the screen, the arrangement view will scroll along with the song. If you right click on a clip, then there is a menu available with various common functions. This includes cut, copy, Paste, Duplicate and Delete. To copy a clip, either click on the top of it or highlight the section you want and then select Copy. You can then paste it in position by clicking on the screen and selecting Paste. You can select more than one clip at a time by holding down the Shift key and clicking on each clip in turn. You can use keyboard shortcuts for Cut, Copy and Paste. These are Ctrl, X, C and V on the PC and Command X, C and V on the Mac. You'll find that using the keyboard shortcut for Duplicate, which is Control or Command D, 
makes it particularly easy to create multiple parts. Alternatively, you can click on the clip and then hold down the control key whilst dragging. To delete a part, click on it and press delete or backspace on the keyboard or right click and press delete. Clips can be renamed by right clicking on them and selecting rename. Clips can be resized or cropped by selecting the square bracket symbol that appears and dragging in or out. This is the easiest way to quickly edit your clips to the length that you want without having to actually change the original file or use an audio editor. The deactivate command is used when you want to stop a clip playing, but you may want to use it again later. The clip can be reactivated by right clicking and selecting activate clip. It's possible to automate many of the controls in arrangement view. To demonstrate, let's automate the track volume to create a fade out at the end of this song. In the first box, select mixer, and then in the second box, select track volume. Now to create the fade, double click on the red line where you want it to finish, and then double click where you want it to start, dropping the volume to the bottom. The clip will nice smoothly fade out. When a function has been automated, a red dot will appear next to it to show that it's been changed. We will look at automation in further detail in the section on creating mixes. At the top of the screen, there is the clip overview section that allows you to see which part of the project you're viewing. You use this bar when you want to zoom in or out. Click on the clip overview and either pull down to see more detail or up to see less. You can also pull at the ends of the clip overview to adjust its size or to pick it up and move it. You can play from any position in the arrangement by clicking on the scrub area, which is here. Click when the speaker symbol appears and playback will start from that point. You can drop markers in the scrub area by right clicking and selecting add locator. These can be renamed to indicate different parts of the project. Double click on the locator to start playback from that point. If you double click on an audio clip, the display will open up in the same way as in session view, and you can change numerous properties of the audio clip. This is looked at in detail in the section clip view and audio clips. Whilst talking about arrangement view, it's important to clarify how it works in relation to session view. This is one of the areas that can be most confusing when you start to use live and regularly causes problems for new users. Essentially, session view and arrangement view have the same components to them. They're just displayed in a different way. Both views have the same number of audio and MIDI tracks, a mixer and other controls. If you turn the volume up on track one in session view, the volume will be turned up on track one in arrangement view. So far, this all makes sense, however. The problem comes when you realise that each track can only play either what is laid out in arrangement view or what is triggered in session view. It can't play both at the same time. The general rule of thumb is that session view takes priority and can override the arrangement view. If you're playing a song in arrangement view, then swap over to session view and trigger a clip on the same track. Whatever was playing on track one in arrangement view will stop. This can be clearly seen because the clip has become greyed out. Also, the back to arrangement button here has lit up to indicate that playback is deviating from what's laid out in arrangement view. Once this has been done for a track, you won't be able to hear any of its clips unless you press that to arrangement. This resets all the tracks so that once again you will just hear the arrangement view. All of this doesn't generally become a problem until you start swapping between views, which is often quite useful to do. For example, you could start playing a song in arrangement view and then experiment with adding drum loops over the top of it in session view. However, you need to make sure that the drum loops you're triggering are on a different audio track to the one that the song is on, otherwise the song will stop playing when a loop is triggered. One of the problems that can often occur between views 
is when you've been working in arrangement view and then you go back to using session view. For example, I have clips laid out over these three tracks in arrangement view and I'll now start triggering clips in session view on tracks one and two. The main tracks I'm using have stopped what's laid out in arrangement view. However, this clip on track three will still come in at a later point. You can tell if clips are still going to play. You can see the block of color of the clip. This isn't too much of a problem whilst practicing your set at home. However, it can be very embarrassing if something unexpectedly starts whilst playing in public. The way to solve this is to press the stop clips button before you start using session view. That way you know that all of the arrangement view has been disabled. So to conclude, if you solely want to use arrangement view, make sure that the back to arrangement button isn't red. And if it is, press it so that the complete arrangement will be played. If you want to solely use session view, press the stop clips button before you start and then you know you won't get any unexpected clips coming in. Finally, it's worth mentioning to be careful of pressing the back to arrangement view button by accident. On the PC, the keyboard shortcut is F10, which is very close to the F11 button for full screen. If you do this by accident, everything that's playing from session view will instantly stop. This is the end of this tutorial.